you doing? I'm Andrew Holmes, and I'm joined by other stone community activists that's in the city of Chicago that is concerned about what went on here at this establishment back here. And first and foremost, I did view the video. Some parts of the, uh, the video that I won't get into to uh, hamper this investigation, but the important part of this is that we all was wondering and wanted to know, did anybody pull her down there? Did anybody force her down there? Was anybody on the other side in the room with her when she got down there? And the answer to that is no. Uh, she walked into that unsecured area that should have been secured with locks on there where she couldn't get in there. Now, I've been inside the freezer down there and the fun looking at that freezer. You can open up that door, take a half step up, turn to your left, pull the other door. This door would be closing anyway. The other door, probably when she got in there, that door closed on her too. Then it was dark in there. Now, there is a knob that you can push to get out of there, but, you know, that investigation has to go on with the Rosemont Police Department to wait on the toxicology to see what's going on with that. But as far as someone pulling it her down there or leading her down there, no. Did she appear inebriated, intoxicated? What was her behavior like? Well, that has to come from the toxicology to tell you what was in her system. But it appears she appears to be impaired, but at the same time, it has to come from the toxicology report. But it still doesn't take away from that. That area should have been secured now. From me looking at the video, she was trying to find her way back upstairs to the lobby. And she was checking the doors. And she was checking other doors, just trying to find her way back upstairs. So in saying that, she was walking forward where all of the video cameras caught her every movement. And I watched her as she went through the other door. And at the same time, she went through an unsecured area, which is not her fault. Because if someone is staying in here with their children, that area is not secure. You can catch a child from going there and open up them same doors, and this can happen to them. But when the toxicology report comes out, you know, it sends it back to another level of what was in her system. And she's not a, a person that drops fentanyl or these, things, these pills that they are taking. And that's not her character. But at the same time, if something was put in her cup, then it goes back to who was in this room and who may have dropped something in her cup. So that remains with the Rosemont Police Department detectives that are working this case. But from my view, no one else was back there down in the unsecured area. And who had the family? Actually watch, how approximate amount of time of people watching and making pretty clear there was no one else in the restaurant that was with her, right? Well, I watched the video from the time she was in the lobby to the time that she got off the elevator. There was no one with her at that point there was no one in the back there's a camera inside that unsecured area and it's it remote to every time a person moves or moving in there so if where the freezer's at that's a wall so there's no way out that way the only way out is she has to come in the way come out the way that she was coming in so that would justify to clear that and they have checked those cameras at a time with a technician to make sure no one alters anything just as the actors uh, here and over uh, here, Jamal, we all are on the same, I mean, not Jamal, but Jedediah, we all are on the same page in trying to secure and make sure that this doesn't happen, that the videos are not altered, and that the family get justice, and at the same time, that the Facebook infight stops, because, you know, if you're accusing this person of doing something, you're accusing that person of doing something, then what you need to do, if you got solid evidence that they did something to file play to this baby, you need to talk to the detectives and give that information to them. Just don't put it out there on Facebook. Because if you put it out there, then be prepared to answer what you put out there. But if you put something out there, just put the facts and the truth. Because we work hard, he work hard to try to calm the situation down, and that's just about it for some justice. Andrew, have the family, has anybody from the family seen the surveillance video? The mother, uh, she will uh, make arrangements to see this footage. I have talked to her about some of this footage, but she is aware that I've seen the footage, but at the same time, she got a thousand things going on for her because that's her baby. And everybody is calling, everybody is talking, but it's, she only wants to know one thing. What happened to her child? Now, 
time. So I'm led up to a child being impaired or something's put in her cup and she wants to know that too. I mean, she's hurt. That's her baby. And that's all she wants to know. So she's waiting on some answers. And she will be looking at the video. Did you talk to her though? Yeah, the video the because I'm a community activist. I'm also a private investigator. I also work with all police agencies just as well as these gentlemen here too. And the, the same reason they're out here is one of the man actually to make sure that the video is put out, the video is shown not only to the family, but also to the public, and everybody can just let the chips fall where they lay if anything wrong happens. So, you know, just as you see the gentleman, my uh, buddy right here, has demanded the Laquan McDonald video, in which he was successful. Same thing, same thing. Just want justice served, and the mother, this is ain't gonna, that ain't gonna go nowhere. She's gonna be hurting the rest of her life. But at the same time, she just wanted to know what happened. Yeah, I called the mother and let her know that I have seen this video. I gave her bits and pieces about it, and she's going to be looking at the video, too, at the same time. The main thing is to make sure that that family, that mother, see the last steps of her daughter from A to Z without anything being altered. And that's what we wanted. Jed and I wanted. We don't want it. Just justice. We don't. We don't want to go into this. This video was uh, altered or anything. So, but my judgment is still intact. After you mentioned two doors connecting the police, are you saying that there were double doors leading into the freezer? You got. You got a big freezer right here. And you got a door. When you open up that door to that freezer, you got another freezer inside of there, which is a half a step to your left. And you pull that door. When you let go of this door, that door closes behind you. Then you step into that one. Then that one closes. That's where she was found. She was found inside of that one. Did I hear you describe earlier on a Facebook Live video that you actually had the chance to go in that freezer? Yeah, I went in the freezer. So can you describe, first of all, how did you get access to that freezer and what it was like? Well, we walked in, in the freezer. They walked me down. I walked her whole steps. And I walked to that freezer, opened up the door. That freezer door closed. Opened up the other door. That freezer door closed. And it was hot as hell in both of them freezers. And dark as hell in the freezer, too. And there is a safety knob, like you ask that bottom knob or something, but you can touch it and that door would come open. So what I did and asked them to, in your investigation, is make sure you took pictures and recorded that that, that door was working properly. But besides that, you know, it, it, it was an uncaused accident that should have never happened. And the door should have been secured and locked because if she had hit that door right there, she turned around and went back the other way because she was trying to get indoors while she was trying to find a way to get out. And I believe she was trying to get back upstairs to her friends. Is your understanding that the freezer was on or off? That information, I don't know. That had to come out in the report. I do know when I went in there yesterday, that freezer was hot as hell. So it gives me the understanding that it wasn't working, and at the same time, that that area where she was at, it's not even being used anyway. Well, you know what, that still has to be determined because I can't say she didn't die of a foul play because, see, when the toxicology report comes out and there's something in her system that shouldn't have been in her system that may have been slipped in there, then you got a criminal case right there. So that would also lead up to that, too. So they're holding off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're holding off everything. They're, they're, this is not just a close, you know, just because of this with the family. It's not closed. It's way far from being closed. This is an open investigation still with the medical examiner's office, still with the toxicology, and you know, it's still an investigation with the Rose Mount Police, and I can guarantee it's still an uh, investigation with these gentlemen here because they're not going to stop, I'm not going to stop, it's just until this case is completely closed and the mother is satisfied. Is there a time stamp or anything like that on it? Do you know approximately what time it was and at least point that she went in there? No, but they have all of that on the uh, reports and everything. It's like, it was like, according to the hotel, there was like 40 hours or 36 hours of video. Well, there was a big gap in between there, and I, and I say this, that let the chips fall where it lay. If you got a security camera and you see somebody in an unsecured area, and if you're monitoring your station and monitor that monitor, then where were you at when she walked through there? Someone should have notified somebody to go downstairs and find out why she down there in that area. And then the gap that's between there 
if indeed you looked at the video surveillance, and I'm talking about not the, the uh, police department, the uh, hotel security staff, if you looked at that surveillance and you seen that she was in that area when you all started looking, then why didn't you all run down there right away and go in that area and try to open up some doors since that was the last place she was? Why should they have to take an employee to come in the next morning or two to go down there and find her? So there's a lack in the security there too. Well, that's up to their uh, attorney to answer that. I can't speak for an attorney uh, which way he's going because that's his profession, just like this is our profession right here. You know, he would have to answer those questions for you. Do you see culpability on the part of the hotel owner? Did I see who? Do you see culpability on the part of the hotel Oh, yeah. They, you know, I, I can tell you, they, they in liability. I can tell you right here, without a doubt. You know, if you got an unsecured area that should have been secured, and I can guarantee you, if they had locks on that door, she'd have turned around and she'd have went back this way. It's as simple as that. So that's where the liability falls on them. So our understanding was the family was going to come here today and watch some of the surveillance video. Have you talked to the family? What are they telling you? Are they still coming? Yes, we're following the directions of the attorney. They're still going to come out here and uh, do some uh, video surveillance, but that's on the time with, with the attorney and her because their mother is going through so, so much. I mean, she's getting called here, called there, and uh, she's, you know, she, she's hurt. She just come out of a... Uh, a little light surgery yesterday. So she's going through so much, so they got to give respect. And that's where I'm just like the activists here. You know, stop the Facebook, putting this on there and that on there, and just getting back to her. Only thing you're doing is upsetting her more. If you got something solid, I mean, you call either one of these activists, give it to them, and let them turn it in to the detectives if you don't want to come there. And it, it, it's just simple as that. If they put stuff out there that shouldn't even be out there, you're disturbing the family, and you're disturbing her. And it's very upset and disrespectful. But see, I'm not going to take uh, too much time, but I want uh, the activists to come up here and speak on their behalf, too. Okay, good. And I do want to just say, uh, at the end of the day, this is still very tragic because Kanika should be one day telling her grandchildren about spending time with her friends at the party. And she should be here. She should be alive. And... To hear uh, the possibility of her being uh, compromised as far as inebriated or under the influence of something that might have been slipped into a drink in an area that was restricted, uh, something that was in monitor, it just definitely further fuels the outrage. And I'm still pressing for truth, transparency. There's a lot of unanswered questions that remain. The video has yet to be released. And we wouldn't be here if the city of Rosemont, Crown Plaza, the mayor's office, if they even just gave us simple talking points to let us know that they even had a direction. I just pray for justice for Kanika, and we just stand with the family. Whatever their will is, that's what we're going to pursue.